Sounds True presents Meditations on Money, deepening your sense of sufficiency and abundance with global activist, teacher, and the author of The Soul of Money, Lynn Twist. In this session, we're going to do some exercises to integrate and bring together into our own life this experience of sufficiency, the profound, radical truth of enough in a way that grounds it and gives you access to the enoughness in your own life. So let's do a guided meditation. Get yourself in a comfortable position. It would be good to have a piece of paper next to you and a pen so that you can journal at some point if you want to. Make sure that you are relaxed and you're in a quiet place. And when you feel comfortable, close your eyes. Feel how at home you are in your body. Experience the gratefulness of the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Once again, the warmth of your body, the warmth of your breath. How the universe caresses you. How the chair you're sitting in supports you. Is a place for you to rest, to be held. Notice how the earth is underneath you always. Not sometimes, but always. I once heard a wonderful phrase that gravity itself is the Earth's love for her creatures. She doesn't want us to get too far away. (laughs) So feel the gravity holding you, hugging you to the surface of the Earth. And now I'm going to ask you to look at your life. Notice and revel in the enoughness, the bounty, the blessing, the beauty of your life. Look at your relationships, your family, the people that love you, the scores and scores of people who you love. Think about your home how much you just love being there. It's not too small, it's not too big, it's perfect for you. If it's an apartment, notice how you've got it exactly the way you want it. You have your favorite place to sit. You have the things around you that you love. Revel in the blessings that surround you in your home. Appreciate your state of health, whatever it is. You're breathing, your heart is beating, you can feel. You're touched and can touch others. The bounty of health. Flood yourself with the experience of love that's all around you. If you have a dog or a cat or a pet, think about how much that colleague, that animal, that partner just adores you and what a comfort it is to have that being in your life. Take a moment now and acknowledge the prosperity, the bounty, the blessing, the enoughness, the beauty, the great fullness, the miracle of your life.
Let gratitude and gratefulness wash over you. Think of the faces of the people that you love and how much they love you. I'm a grandmother now, so I think of the faces of my three beautiful, wonderful, adorable grandchildren. Pick some of those very special people and sit here now in the bounty of the love they have for you and the love you have for them. Think about the beauty and blessing of your faith or your access to wisdom. It might be your church. It might be your meditation practice. It might be your love for poetry. It might be your commitment to music in your life. Revel in the bounty of that music in whatever form it comes. Flood yourself with the experience of spirit. Think about the possessions now that you love. I have a little hybrid car, a Prius. I love my car. I love driving around. It makes me fulfilled to think that I'm Reducing the amount of energy that I'm using makes me happy. Think about the possessions you love. Maybe it's an oriental rug. Maybe it's a painting. Maybe it's a beautiful bowl on your table. Maybe it's a statue in your house. Think about things that you've created, your capacity to create, to build, to write, to shape something, to decorate. Maybe it's the flowers in your garden or the vegetables you grow if you do that. Whatever it is, each one of us creates, generates, we generate beauty and bounty for ourselves and others. What's your way of doing that? Revel in the appreciation of having that gift. Now think about the community that's around you the place you live, the people at the grocery store, the people at the cleaners, the people that serve you, that are there for your every need, that bring you what you need every day, that make sure that you're taken care of. They're everywhere. The bus driver, the delivery person, the people taking care of your public park, the telephone operators, the plumber. We are served and supported and loved every day. Not by a few people, but by dozens, perhaps hundreds of people every day. Think about the food that you eat and everything that goes into it. The people who prepared it. 
and cooked it and made it beautiful. Maybe that was you. The people who brought it to the market where you bought it. The people who arranged it in the market so it would be attractive and easy to see. The truckers who brought it from wherever it was grown to a place where it could be distributed to people like you. The people who picked it, picked that lettuce or picked those peppers. The farmers who planted it, who watered it, who loved it, who cared for it, and the earth who provided it. That entire chain of love and support and service is in every bite of food that many of us eat. Appreciate the labor, the love, the bounty, the service that brings you every meal that then nurtures your body so you can serve others. Stand in the bounty, the blessing, the miracle, the exquisite enoughness and beauty of your personal life. Take a moment now and congratulate yourself on the extraordinary, miraculous, bountiful, blessed life that you have created. Now take a deep breath. And open your eyes. And in your journal or on this piece of paper next to you, write down some of the relationships that you treasure the most, that you feel so blessed to have. List the names, people, the people that love you and the people that you love. And if tears are coming to your eyes, let them flow. What moves us most often about our life is the incredible people that inhabit it, that love us, that support us, that would do anything for us and that we would do anything for. Realize that you could list on and on and on. And write about three, four, or five more names. Now write down possessions that you love. Like my little Prius or the oriental rug in my living room that I just love, or my father's piano. What are the things, the treasures that you have that are part of your life, that are very special for you? It may be a sailboat. It may be your favorite chair. It may be maybe your computer. But list those possessions that you love, that really serve you, that, that you treasure.
You could probably list many more. But now let's go on to what are the gifts and blessings in your life that are really at the core of your happiness and contentment, at the core of your joy. They may be things you've already listed, people you've already listed. Maybe it's the opportunity to be a mother or a grandmother, the privilege of being a wife, the joy of work worth doing. It may be that you love to dance, to sing. List 10 or 20 of the greatest blessings that you have that are at the core of your happiness and your joy. I know you could list a hundred, two hundred, a thousand, two thousand. Just start listing. your tears are flowing, let them flow. We're moved when we really take a look at the quality, the blessing, the miracle of our lives. Now finish up that last thought, one of the exquisite ways that you express life. It's at the core of your happiness, your love for the world, your love and joy for life itself. Now let me read Another quote from Hazrat Inayat Khan that in many ways is the story of all of our lives. And it goes like this. I asked for strength, so God gave me difficulties which made me strong. I asked for wisdom, so God gave me problems which I learned to solve. I asked for prosperity, and God gave me a brain and brawn to go to work. I asked for courage, and God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for love, and God gave me people to help. I asked for favors, and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted. I received everything I needed. I say that's the story of our life, the story of your life, the story of mine, and the story of all life. We don't receive everything we think we want, but we receive everything that we need, and our needs are met exquisitely. They might even be met by something we would call terrible, like a divorce. But out of that meeting us, life gives us that which we need to become who we want to become. It takes us through the passages we need to go through that give us strength, wisdom, a real understanding of prosperity, our connection to courage, and floods us with love. All of this is the richness of life. The richness of life does not come from money. We all know it, but we forget it. And money then becomes that tool that we get to use to express the bounty, 
the blessing, the beauty, the sufficiency, the great fullness of life. Money becomes a conduit or a way to nourish the beauty of life. It's no longer the almighty goal. It's a tool in the background, a useful tool, and it's a carrier that can deepen our experience of the miracle of life if we use it that way. So I invite you now to reframe, recast, recreate your life as the miracle that it actually is, that place where your needs are met, where life comes to you, where the bounty and blessing of life is all around you. And when you stop trying to scramble for what you don't really have, you see that what you have is bountiful and you make a difference with it. And you move from that great fullness into thanksgiving, then back into the great fullness, and then back into thanksgiving. Brother David says this, that the open hand, the posture of the open hand, and if you open your hand now and look at it, that posture, that open hand, is the posture that both gives and the posture that receives. When the hand is open, giving and receiving can take place. But when those fingers start to curl and grab and hold on, that's the beginning of a fist and the source of all violence on this planet and the inner violence in our own life is that clinging, that holding on, the curling of those fingers. If you allow that hand to be open, the ebb and flow of life and the ebb and flow of money will always serve your needs.